This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone. So, okay, one one join now. Okay. Okay. Uh, hi, but hello. Yeah. So you are from uh, IT background. Come again. I didn't. Uh, are you from IT background? Yes. Yeah, nice. Uh, you logging in? Yeah, I'm new. I, I already have the Salesforce admin, so I was just like, yeah. Nice, nice. <laughs> you logged all the uh, parts in admin, right? Like flows. Yes. Flows. Yeah, nice. oh, process. Process builder. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Nice. That's good. So uh, development is not that much uh, hard, and the basics of uh, writing this particular logic, sir. Purely basics is OOPS concepts, as we all know. Uh, the OOPS concept is the best basics of all the languages we have seen in the outside world, uh, like Java, .NET. All these are based on OOPS concepts. So this OOPS concepts is the basics for this uh, language which we are using in Salesforce developing. That is called Apex language. The language name is we are using a language called Apex language, and this is also this language also has been developed based on OOPS concepts only. Same as Java, .NET, how they have developed. Same Apex language also has been developed based on this OOPS concepts only. So we want to know about the OOPS concepts. OK. If you know the basics of OOPS concepts, we can happily uh, write the logics inside the Apex language, what we have in our Salesforce. So what are the basics of OOPS concepts? OK. So what are the, what are the things it will talk about? In short, I will tell you. In OOPS concepts, what are the things it will talk about? It will talk about the class. What is a class? It will talk about what is a method. Okay. It will talk about some of the logic world conditions. Some conditions will be there, like if conditions or else conditions. Why the conditions will be there? For loops, why the loops will be there? If I am getting some collection of data, how the collection of data can be retrieved one by one, one by one, and how the um, collection will be get completed in the last. So it will talk about the loop part and try and catch exceptions what is the use of try and catch if some action is performing and some error has been occurred in the middle i don't want to continue my remaining action i want to come out of it how to, how to come out of it try and catch exception by using try and catch exception so variable declarations how can we declare the variables inside the coding part so integer strings how can you declare those things okay integer strings i should write so like this and these are the basics of it. Some extensions in Apex is these. These are the extensions in Apex. What are the extensions? SOQL queries. Why you will write SQL queries? To query the data. That means in order to fetch the data from the Salesforce database to use it in our functionality inside the coding part. We will write SOQL queries. Collections. Okay, you are fetching the collection of data, some list of data or set of data where you will store it in collections you will store the data i will i will get some uh, some 10000 records i will i will query some 10000 records where i will store it in collections i will store it okay that is the use of collections dml operations okay you have fetched it and you have stored the data in the collections you want to perform some action some update or delete or uh, uh, insert or something what other thing you want to do it so all those things are dml operations 
Okay, for this, we'll use some parameters. Why we'll use parameters? In the parameters, we'll pass some values where we'll use it in the method parts. So everything is interlinked here. Okay, yeah. If you have any okay. questions, you can ask me in the middle of the class also. I don't have any problem. <laughs> yes, I have questions because uh, I know I missed the first part of your question. You asked if I'm technical. Um, I'm not technical. I'm a project manager. I just want to start building my, my company uses Salesforce. So mm -hmm. I want to start building myself technically because I'm thinking of moving towards a product role. And you cannot be a product, get into a product manager without understanding Salesforce. So I started with the admin. Now I want to go more deeper with the development. So I think <laughs> this is the first time I'll see, I'll look about coding kind of. Yeah, so it's new to me too. It's new. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, we'll definitely learn it. Just let me open my sales force in my site so that I can show you. So you have your own uh, developer, right? Come again. You have your own developer, right? Yes, I do. I do. I have that. Yes, just practice daily over there. That's the best. So uh, this is my own developer org I'm opening. So till now you have seen all the setup page, what are the admin tasks you are doing, everything you are doing here. So yes. the extension is from here, we are going for the developer console, you know this. Yeah. Hope you have seen it, but you haven't worked on it, that's it. So you have Sorry, I mean, Yes. The page you will see in the first time, nothing will be open, everything will be blank. Okay, here mm -hmm. you have to most, most used tabs. <clears throat> this is the most used tab, file. File is the most used tab in the developer console. What it will condense? We can able to create a new Apex class here. Apex class means where uh, we will write the methods and logics. In the okay. Apex class, where we will write the methods and logics. I told you, na? oops, once is basic supports, class and method. The main parts are classes and methods. In the class, we will write methods. That means one class contains n number of methods. Inside the methods, we will write the logics. The logs where we will write is inside the methods. Inside the methods, we will write the logics. No, One class contains n number of methods. So where you can create where you can create our apex classes like this file new apex class. Like not only apex class, you can able to create apex triggers, visual force page, visual force components. I think these things nowadays no one is using because we have Aura and LWC. So no one is using these things, but these are the old ones. Okay. And lightning applications, I told you right, Aura component and LWC component. This is called Aura components, lightning applications, lightning components, lightning interface, events, tokens. In this whole, for this development part, we, we want to know about these two. Apex classes, Apex triggers. These two are very important for us to know it in this development classes. Okay. Apex classes, Apex triggers. How to create it? File, new, Apex class, Apex trigger. Anything you can do it. I will tell you the differences. What is the difference of Apex class and Apex trigger? Why we have two names? What is the, user, what is the difference of these two? Okay. I will tell you in the further classes. Open. Open and photo. If already existing class are there or existing trigger is there, I want to open the swings. So this is one open. If I click on it, you can see a box which contains entity types. Here it is talking about the classes, Apex classes. These are the class names. Triggers, if I click on triggers, these are the trigger names. Okay, this is page means we have pages. It will talk about the objects also. These are the objects which are available in my particular org. All the all the objects it will show, even some objects won't show in the front end as you are seeing in the object manager. Even they are the standard objects also, they won't show in the object manager. But these are the full set of objects which are available in my particular org. Static resources, I will tell you in the further days how are these are the static resources and obviously the packages. These are no one will use it, but static resources I will tell you in the further classes. So okay. if you want to open the existing ones, like Apex classes or Apex triggers, yes, this is one place we can able to open it. One is 
normal open and another one also will be there open resource what is the difference of this one and this one open resource you can see the box is different and here what here we can open apex classes apex triggers objects or a components this much we can able to open and this much we can able to see here not only apex class apex triggers and objects we can able to open aura components also so this one is the search is uh, a bit expandable we can able to see a bit more than that above search than this above open we can able to see a bit more inside is open source okay? yeah so that is the difference of this two and this one no one will use it no problem at all because this is like a what you can say this one we can directly able to fetch the file this one means we will open the particular folder that is the difference this is about the folder part this is about directly particular file part so we can we are very happy to open directly file instead of opening a folder because if you want to open a folder then go inside of it then click on file it's a waste of time we can directly open the file so that's why mo most of the people will use open resource okay so finally save all if you want if if you are opening some two three classes at a time and you are not saving all those if you want to save all those just click on save all all the class will save at a time if you want to close all the tabs that means all the classes if example if you are opening so many classes it will show side by side like this so if you want to close all those just close all so this is the most used fine uh, tab and second tab here right now nothing is enabled but once you open the class and once you create one class these will these things will pop up again okay these things will come again in the front side so that you can able to select also okay if you want to find some example um, i have written some code you know in my org there are some uh, some 200, 200 uh, apex class are there okay and i got oh. some error i want i don't know who has written that particular logic where is that particular logic in but which class i don't know but i got some error in my email in my mm -hmm. email it is showing that some validation is this one this one this one this one some xxx okay. something is there and that xxx is where it was i don't know in which code it was i don't know how can i search it even if i don't know anything where it was where it is stored where it has been written in which class it is written how many classes it is written which line it is written i don't know anything how can i know it search in files click on search in files what do you want to type it example some xxx where it has been written search it will show the class name actually that thing is there um, what I can say, I can type account. You can see account word where I have used. You can see in this particular update class, you can see 12th line, 13th line, 16th, 17th line. You can see these many lines I have used a word called account. Like this, yeah. in future, if you are getting an error, you don't know where this particular line has been written. Even if you don't know where this particular field has been used, in which course you have, it has been used, even if you don't know, you can able to get it from here. So we can able to search anything from here, search in files, the most powerful option. Okay. Right. In these two tabs, any if you have any questions, you can ask me. You can export today also, you can you can ask me tomorrow also. I don't have any problem, but it's just I was asking. Yeah, okay. The first the first question is um how long based on your experience can someone take to like understand to actually be a developer from the training part is the training sufficient that you can understand what classes um, trigger and to be able to yes for understanding this is trigger this is class uh this is particular method training is enough if you want to write a more complex code my suggestion is at least one month of time to practice daily you can able to get to that particular uh, uh, writing that uh, 200 lines of code, 300 lines of code. I will tell you a small thing. I will tell you uh, if you see some 500 lines of code, just think of it in your org, in your organization. What is a 500 lines of code? It is not a single method. Okay, it contains multiple multiple methods. Okay, how the uh, what we can say uh, my rack is full. How it is full by placing my several clothes inside of it not a single cloth same code is also same my code is very big but my logic is not in single method in different different methods 
so if you understand the difference of the methods okay these many methods are there if you i will show you the course no problem the further um, let me open one of the codes so that i can show you show you uh, Okay, I'll open this. Yeah, you can see this is one of the code I am just a uh, sample code. Uh, you can see this is one method. This is second method. Yes. This is third. If I understand the difference of this, okay. If I am a very small child, twenty-five lines of code only, or twenty-five lines of code, I cannot, I cannot understand it. But if I understand the difference of it, this is one. This is two, this is three. Okay, there are total three different methods are there. So I have to understand three different methods. That's it. In this particular class, in this particular class, I have only three methods. So what is I then I will do what I will do? I will collapse it. Then I will see what is the logic right hand side of it. Okay, this is the logic in straight hand side of it. Then I will collapse it and collapse it again. So collapse. I will read this one. Okay, this one. Then I will collapse and collapse and I'll read this one. If you read like this, if you practice like this uh, for one month, again, uh, again, uh, that you can you can easily understand any any kind of code what they have written. It's not that hard. Okay. I will write. If you know the basic, if you are good in basic, you can easily read it. The code is very user friendly. You can easily read it. You can easily understand it. You can see. I really write the for loop. You can see. You can easily understand it. The words are very easy to read it also. So. Yeah, you can easily understand it. It's not that much hard. If you know the admin, so it's very easy. <laughs> not a problem also. Okay. If a person who is very fresher in Salesforce who don't know admin also, then they will feel some discomfort because they don't know some names. You know already the admin part and you worked on it. So it's not that hard. Why? The okay. only thing why everyone will be afraid is they don't know the names. Example, if I... Um, if I go to artificial intelligence, recently I started learning this machine learning also. I was I was getting effort in the starting days because I don't know even the single name also what they are using. Correct? In machine learning what they are using, the names, the new names, I don't know even the names also. So I got effort. Once I got the curriculum and I am seeing all the names, once I remember the names, I remember all the names. Okay, this is the name, this name, this name, this name, I remembered it. So then now I was getting some confidence. If they are talking some words, I remembering yes, this part is that part, yes, this part is that part. I am remembering something by learning the mission learning. So it will be helpful like this. In in that way, it will be helpful. So if you know the names of the particular topics which we are learning, it will be very easy for us. It will give some uh, um, what you can say enthusiast enthusiast. Oh, I want to learn it. I want to learn it because I know yeah. it. I know this word. I want to learn extra. It will give some uh, zeal for us, zeal to learn the new technologies. So, yeah, I don't want to waste your time. So, debug, the third most important one. Open, execute, anonymous window. Even if you don't remember the full name, just remember the word called anonymous window. Okay, the last words, anonymous window. Click yeah. on it. What is this small box? Okay, I have written some logic, some uh, some uh, 30 lines of logic I have written. 30 lines of logic in single method I have written. I written the logic. I know it will work because I wrote it. But I want to test it. As a developer, I want to test it compulsorily. Even if I wrote it, I am very confident also I have to test it. Before testing that one directly in the record, that means directly going to a particular record and test it, whether I can test it in the coding part only. Yes. Where? Anonymous window. In the place of anonymous window, we can able to test happy. Here, what we will do? Here we will call class name dot method name. We will call it and we'll click on execute. Then it will open the log and it will show whether it is passed or failed. Whether your code was working or not. Whether it is passed or failed, it will show it. So whether your code worked or not. Where in the debug? Open execute anonymous window. This is the best place where we can able to do all those things. So, sorry, something I opened, I think. Am I audible, right? Yeah. Why my developer console is not opening, man? <laughs> what happened to this? <laughs> Suddenly, it behaved weird. 
Something happened to my login. Don't know. Yeah. Uh, but you know it, right? You got it, right? Yeah. Just give me a second. I will log in again. My good behavior is not getting. I thought my internet is gone, firstly. But you can able to hear me means that means my internet is there. So, yeah. You worked on admin parts, uh, so many things. So that's good. Uh, you have every idea about the relationships uh, between the objects, lookup relationship, master detail relationship. You have full idea, right? Because those things will play the key role uh, when we are talking about the coding parts. And uh, junction object, okay. you have some idea about the object, right? Yeah, it was breaking. I didn't hear the last part. What do you say? Uh, you know, uh, you have the idea about junction objects, right? Apex. Uh, yeah, am I audible? Hello? No, I, I don't know. Something's happening. Your line, your line keeps breaking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, am I audible now? Yes, it's better now. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, that's why I think my developer console is not worked. My net was uh, some flash session has been given. Internets. So, yeah, I'm asking. Uh, you have a better idea about the uh, relationships, right? Between the objects. Master detail. Relationship look, objects, uh, yeah. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. Man -to -man relation, junction object. Yeah, I think the part uh, that I still, still have to start, I have to practice more is dashboards and data migration. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Data migration, you're using the data loader, right? Or yeah, data, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah data. data loader. Yeah, yeah it's was good. It was good. Uh, use that one data loader data loader's best version is uh, i remember 47.1 i think that is the best version which i have worked without any glitches without any problems it is opening very uh, that's why i didn't upgrade it it's asking so many times to upgrade but i didn't upgrade it. yeah so yeah so debug the only one this one is the only one which is very important reminding so not that much important so no of that much of interest also because we will use most of this one. because everything we can able to do it in the down part this is the down part is the most important part okay okay so these three are important in the front above part so here comes the down part the most uh, happy part in this uh, developer console locks okay. what is lock Okay, I have written some logic. As I told you, we can able to test it in the debug logs. The debug, I will open anonymous window, I will put some value and I'll call my class name dot method name and I'll click on execute. Yes. My code is working fine. How do I know? Through debug logs, you will know where I can see it. Two ways I can see it. I can directly see my logs in the developer console under the log section log tab here here i can able to directly see it what is the second place here or the second place is you can come to setup page quick find box type debug you can see the debug logs on debug logs someone will say okay okay uh, starting day i have done it uh, i call, i fired my class but i haven't seen my debug logs here then what I have to do? Come here. First and foremost thing as a developer you have to do is when I was working on any codes, when you are performing any testing part, come here and create one debug log for your names. Here, my org, my name is, my username is this one. So you can see this one and I'll click on edit. I'm creating a debug log for the user. Remember the words user for user will create the debug logs. Yeah. This is my username. User. The best practice is create the debug logs for only two hours. Now 6:26 p.m. 8:26. Okay. The best session is two hours. 
but it's not compulsory. You can put 24 hours also, but the session is 2 hours because it will reduce the number of logs to show here. Here you can see in this middle, right? Okay. Here you can see the debug logs. So if you put 2 hours, it will reduce the number of logs to show here so that you can see in the future um, after uh, tomorrow, if you want to open it, you will see if you put 24 hours, you will see so many debug logs even if you don't work also. So batch class will run every day sometimes uh, in our logs, uh, the batch class will run every one hour. So, so many logs you will see, you will get frustrated why this many are showing it. So if you put two hours until your work is completed, the debug logs will come. After that, you can you can able to come here and you can delete all the debug logs because your work is completed. You know the, the work is the code is working fine. So you can delete all the debug logs easily because the logs also will be minimum. So that's why the best solution is two hours. When you have to do it, when you are about to ready to testing it. That time the best session is that time come here, create a debug log on your name and give some two hours. Then logs will come here compulsory. Once you enable the debug log, the logs will come here definitely. This is the logs tab under the developer console. Test. What is the use of this test? Test tab. Okay, I have written, you can see, these are all my Apex classes. For these Apex classes or Apex triggers, I have tried the test classes. Why we will write the test classes? I have written the logic in the code part, Apex classes. Okay, I know it is working, I have tested it. But how come the developer console will, will understand it is working or not? If you write a test data, if you write a coding in a test data and you pass some test data inside the particular logics, then it will understand the logic is working fine. So for that, we have to write the test classes. Okay, you have written the test class, then you will run the test class. Once you run the test class, you have to know whether it is, it, it is passed or failed, correct? Once we write the test class, we have to know whether it is passed or failed, where you can able to check it. I can check whether it is passed or failed here. Okay. Whether my code is passed or failed, where you can check? You can check it here. How it will show? In the status, under the status down, it will show green tick, green tick mark. If it is green, that is passed. If it is red, it is failed. Yeah. That particular class is failed. So those things we can able to check it under the test tab. Checkpoints. Example, I have written some logic. Uh, already I will open one of the existing code, then I will show you the checkpoints. Sorry, this is a test class. You can see. I told you right. Test class. Yeah. The way. So checkpoints. What's the use of? You can see. A red color. This is a checkpoint. You mm. can see. Is it showing or not here? In the down. You can see. Checkpoint location. Batch apex. Sorry, batch apex example test. You can see seventh line, third line, one iteration. So checkpoints. So those things you can able to find it in the checkpoints tab. Got it? So example, uh, you and me are developers. I have placed out some checkpoints and I have went off. I will tell you, you open the uh, particular class and check the checkpoints. Then obviously you will open the checkpoint. You will open the class. And you will see the checkpoints which I have marked. Then you can see the numbers here, or, or else you can see the dots here. It's very easy, right? To communicate with each other. So that is the use of checkpoints. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Next, creator, the most used developer console uh, option for any developer. What is creator? I told you, right? We will write the SOQL queries. Okay, what did what did SOQL queries do? It will fetch the data from the Salesforce database. Okay, I have written my query inside my code. I don't know whether it is working or not. How I know? Today I wrote the, as you can see, this is my SOQL query, you can see. Okay, actually what it will do, it will fetch all the account with IDs as well as names. Okay. I know in my org accounts are there, account records are there, I know it. That's why I have written this logic and okay, I will I will show you also. I will, I will copy it, I will paste it here. Select ID comma name, 
from account object okay so mm -hmm. i will click on execute here you can see it is showing that is and because i know in my org the records are there it is showing i have written this logic in i have written this query directly in the code so it will work no problem i know it is there what if you are moving this code to a new org where account records are not there not even single record is there in this particular org and you are moving this code to particular that particular org what it will happen my query will get fail correct yeah. my query won't work because there is no records in my org object in my account public there is no records then how come my query will query the data from the database there is no data in the database then it will show the error there is no records found or uh, it will say no records found this kind of errors it will get i don't want to show that kind of errors in my code if i'm writing a code the code has to be the finite way yeah so no errors has to come inside of it then how can it do it so those kind of things how can you uh, avoid before writing the queries we will query the we will write that particular query in the query editor and we will check whether the records are available or not then we will note all those objects names in our running nodes and while deploying we will tell our uh, dip, uh, who is the person who is uh, performing the deployment we will tell them if you are deploying this particular codes please make sure at least one record is available on the destination org on this particular objects at least one record a list of one record please maintain a list of one record in this particular objects on the destination org so that the person who is deploying that person will maintain at least one one record on the particular destination org so that they will deploy our codes to that particular destination org so that even if they run the code also they won't get any errors okay that is the best solution we can able to give for the persons who are deploying the fun, uh, functionalities to uh, higher orgs. Okay, so that is the use of this query editor. We can able to query anything, any query, any object query, any uh, conditions also where where name equals to uh, only this person, this person name where name equals to like uh, Sam like this. We can able to put the filter conditions also. All those conditions we can able to place it. We can do everything here. Okay. We can do all kind of like Sam. You can see the same of the name of Sam. If there is no records, you can see it is showing zero records. Everything it will show. So whatever the query we have written here, that query only it is showing in the above. You can see here. So we can see that query to two places. So that is the use of uh, query editor, the most uh, used tab in developer console. Okay, and view state, we don't use it that much. No need of uh, learning also. This one also, we don't use it that much. This one, we will use it most. Problems, what? Example, I have written this logic. I will remove this semicolon here. Guess what? I will save it. can see i got the error so missing semicolon at test dot start test everyone will think that missing semicolon at test dot start test everyone will think that huh here semicolon what it is missed but a developer can understand okay before this line only some semicolon is missed a developer can understand that okay how can a developer can understand that by facing so many errors like this in his career in his or her career they will yeah. understand they will see through experience okay you can see the error is coming on 12th line but we have to resolve it in the 10th line you can see the difference right yes everyone will think that the error is in 12th line only everyone will fight here itself everyone will fight in the 12th line something is wrong something is wrong 12th line but no one will think about the 10th line <laughs> that is the magic of developing so like this it will be sometimes the error will come in the second line first line but the problem is some of the in the last lines sometimes like that also it will come at the times don't panic okay example i'm the first i'm very new i don't know that 
uh, how can I know it? Just to copy that particular error and Google it. First and first suggestion. If a new person, if you're getting panic, if you don't know that particular error, first Google it. First read what the other developers are saying about it. What the other people in the world saying about that particular particular part. Okay, then you'll get some idea. Okay, this error is talk, they are talking about about this error, about this criteria. Okay, is this criteria has been used in my logic? Okay, where it was used? Okay, because of this, is, is this error is coming? This logic is correct. Then check for it. So panic, uh, don't know it of panic here. Okay, so that is the best way we can able to overcome those things. So, so this is the whole overview of this particular developer concept. Okay, you can see I told you right, run test. I, I didn't show you right, now I'll show you, you can see. Test is there. You can see this is the test class. You can see yeah. here in the right side, you can see my mouse. There's the yeah. button called run test. I'll click on run test. You can see, it is running, running, running. You can see it is failed or not yes it is failed so okay what is the reason it failed i will i will double click on it you can see it came here what is the error here the error is there what is this error no more than one execute batch class can be called from within a test class make sure it is iteratable return from the start method matches the batch size resulting to one batch execution invocations this is the error why? Because in this particular class, I was getting all the 400 data of the accounts and I was passing to batch class and I was calling the batch class double triples, I think. Yes, double triples maybe. In the class, I passed it double triples. That's why it is throwing errors. I have to write the batch class correctly. Here, the test class is not failing. The batch class is the problem here. You can see. One execute batch can be called from a test method. I'm calling multiple execute batches. So one time only you can see this one. This one I am calling multiple times. That's why it is shopping it. So like this. So the kind of errors we have to see it. So we can able to find it here like this class method. You can see this is our class. This is our method. That's it. There is X errors and tracking. So like this you can able to run the test classes. You can see here you can see it. I have double clicked it. That's why it opened here. Or else you can click on this plus icon. It will uncollapse it. If you click again, then here is the error. You can directly double click it, or you can come here and click on it. It will come here, here only. In the above only. Here click. If you double click also, it will come here. Both are same. Most people will click double click here itself directly. Yeah. So, like this, you can have to check whether the, our class is failed or passed. Here you can see it will show failures. Total one is there. One is failed. One method is there, one method failed. So it is showing that one. So like this, we can able to check the functionalities. Okay. This is purely about the developer console, what we have in our Salesforce for writing the logics. So for this, for what we have to learn, class, what is class? It's a blueprint of any object. Okay. A blueprint of any object. Okay, classes as in a simple words, it's a blueprint of any object. Here, what we will have here inside the class, we will have the methods. What we will have inside the classes, we will have methods. What is the use of this particular methods? Here, we will perform all functional logic developments. What are the developments we want to do? What are the logics we want to perform? What are the functionality logics we want to write it? Everything we will write inside the method only not inside the class, not inside the class, inside the method only we will write all the functional logics. Okay. Inside the class, what do we write? Inside the class, we will write methods. Outside the methods, we can able to declare the variables. We can able to declare the collections. Only these two are, and uh, uh, what we can say, allowed. Only these two are allowed. Either variable declarations or collection declarations. Only these two are allowed. Remaining things are not allowed outside the methods. Okay. So inside the class, methods will be there. Inside the methods, we will write the main logics, main functional logics. Okay. 
like this it will be and obviously as i told you if or else conditions this is about the conditions it is talking about the condition whether if this condition is meeting then only go inside of it or else go outside of it go else condition if or else not only if or else there will be like this kind of scenarios also you will see if or else if or else if or else this kind of scenarios also we may get we may see this is also possible okay so here what we'll do here we'll uh, differentiate the logic performances by using conditions if this is meeting go inside of the if condition if it is not meeting the criteria go to else condition so if you want to check these kind of criteria if stage equals to one go to if condition if stage is equals to true go to else if condition if it is not meeting go to else if stage three stage three also not meeting go to else if stage four stage four is meeting then go inside of it or else go to else condition so like this also it is possible in coding part and more next one is for loops i have just showed you that for loops why we will use this for loops okay if i am getting some collection of data i want to perform the action in a single action i want to perform all the thousand records i got some thousand records i want to perform the action on all the thousand records at a time in a single transaction single transaction means i am firing my logic only one time in that one time only i want to perform the action on all the thousand records by using for loops we can able to achieve it that means normally if you want to perform that action on all the thousand records you have to run thousand times but in a single time i want to perform that action is for loops by using for loops we can able to perform that action in a single transaction that means it will run thousand times only the for loop only will run thousand times the remaining things will run normally okay try and catch as i told you the most uh, important thing try and catch exception for every logic whatever the logic you will write inside the method the best solution is to put a try and catch exceptions what is the use of this try and catch exceptions in the try part we will write the full logic okay and the exception will be there catch exception will be there in the down what is the use of this in try in try once it entered the try functionality and your logic will run in the logic if you are getting any error in the middle it won't allow to go to next line it will stop that logic at that particular part because you are getting some error it won't allow to perform that logic continuously because you are already getting an error it will stop that logic it will go to catch it will go to catch and it will throw the error in the front end it will show the error saying that this particular error has been came for this particular logic so it is very easy for us to understand okay some error is coming in our particular logic it is very easy for us okay some error is coming i have to do some uh, thorough check about my code again because some error is coming it is very easy for us to catch that particular errors catch to catch the particular exceptions or errors it is very easy for us if you write try and catch the best practice of salesforce is this one okay everyone will use it even if you write all the things very good okay your your code is very good but you forgot to write and try and catch exception the lead developer or architect will say put a try and catch whether you don't know this small thing also they will talk like this in some companies if the architect is very harsh they will talk like this okay because that is uh, very basic when you are learning about the coding part try and catch is very basic if you write it that's very happy for us it's like a happy thing for every developers mm. okay or someone will write instead of try and catch someone some people will write debug logs that is also good that is also not bad that is also good someone will be very interested of writing debug logs some market will say they they don't have any problem if you write debug logs also but most people likes try and catch if you like debug logs also that is also good that is also not wrong okay so next part is variables i want to perform some action in my logic at that part at the time of performing some logics uh, some uh, values i will get in the middle of some values like uh, 2 plus 3 5 will come but i want to multiply that 5 to 5 another 5 
So I want to store this particular 2 plus 3 value in some place for temporary purpose. Where I can store it? Variables. Okay. So we can declare the values in the variables in order to store the values temporary. Our actions, once the actions are performed, the variables will get erased. That means the values in the variables will get erased. So variables will be used like this for us in the coding part where we can able to store the values temporarily here. So it will be very helpful for us to store the values temporarily here in the coding part. So variables will play a key role in every language, not only in the Apex language, Java, dot, and everywhere the variables will be there. So it will play a key role inside of uh, every logic parts. Variables, very easy to understand and it will play a key roles. So, till here, common in every logics. These are common in Java, .NET, everywhere it is common. Till here. Okay. Once again. Okay. Sorry for this. So, next. These are also some part common, but mostly in the Apex language. SQ, SOQL queries. Okay. What it will do? As I already told you, it will fetch the data from the Salesforce database. Okay. By using this SQL query, we can able to fetch the data from the Salesforce database. Okay. I fetch some 1000 records. Where you can store it? I can store in the collections. What are the collection names? List or set or map list or set or map why we have three why can't we have only one why we are having three yeah some difference are there inside the three also i will tell you in the further class and next okay you have stored the data and that collections that is also fine you have written some logic and you are performing some uh, uh, field update on the particular thousand records okay field update is also okay you are updating it how can you write the update action that is called DML operations. Okay. That is called DML operations. Okay. What it will have? Insert, update, delete, undelete, upset. These are all DML operations. Okay. If you want to insert a record, that means you are creating a new record. Inserting means creating a new record. Updating, updating an existing record. Deleting, deleting an existing record, undeleting in whatever the delete you are performing. If you want to undelete it, you can undelete it. Upset, upset means what? Upset is combination of insert and update. That means um, you, in your list, if you have thousand records, yeah, some records you want to insert, some records you want to update. That means some records are very new to Salesforce. Some records are already there. I want to update that records. If you write upset, it will only auto adjust all those things. If you write upset, it will only auto adjust all those things. It will check whether this record is already there or not. If it is not there, it will create the record. If it is there, it will update the record. Okay. So that is the power, powerful uh, one, upset. Very rarely we will write it also in the codes because mostly we, we will already know whether the records are there or not. So maximum we will use insert or update maximum delete also we won't write maximum because we know we don't want to delete example if i am the if uh, uh if i am the ceo of my company i am getting the customer's data very uh in today's days you know the customer data getting the customer data is very hard because we have to pay more and more money so no company wants to delete the data so we will write very less uh, logics inside the data deletion, deletion of data also. We will write very, very less data, very, very less logics for deleting of the data because no company wants to delete the customer's data because maybe the customer today, they didn't uh, agree for our uh, terms and conditions. Maybe tomorrow the customer will come and uh, say, I, wa I want to do it. We cannot say, right? We cannot predict it. So that, that's why the, the company don't want to delete their customer data. So that's why we will write very less logics inside the delete part. The most logics we will write is insert and update. Okay. Okay. And very, very rarely we will write the upset. Where we will write this upset the most while performing some integrations. Very rarely we will write it upset. Okay. And these parameters. 
obviously i told you these parameters will play the key role when you are passing some values inside the methods because every time i'm saying class and method method inside the method you will write the logics but how come the values will pass inside the methods so by using parameters we will pass the values inside the methods okay some parameters we can able to pass the values inside the uh, inside the methods okay so that is the yeah. use of these parameters i will show you how it will look like i will normally show you one of the uh, sample code which uh, already i have it done yeah you can see this is class this is method and this is called parameters whatever you write inside the brackets is called parameters yeah. this is parameters which i am talking about i'm i'm saying that the logic we will write inside 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 yes we are writing the logic inside but how come the values are passing from the parameters you can see here how come you are passing the values in the inside the parameters now tell me we will get these values from that triggers they are related from the triggers some trigger is there i don't know where i have written it so yeah from here this is the main one so everything is interlinked okay we will write the logic we will write the logic this log this class okay we will write the method we will write this method inside the class we will call this class inside the trigger where we will call this class inside the trigger okay we will write the we will call this class inside the trigger trigger is the main one trigger is like uh, uh, grandfather class is like father method is like child okay so this is the format so yeah. child will be with the parent and parent and child will be with the grandparent that is the form of this particular coding this is our method name this method name is connected with this particular class and these two are connected with this particular trigger let's see that is how, that is the owner of uh, this particular connection between the apex classes apex triggers i told you right apex class apex triggers i will show you this is one of the apex class which i have written and this is one of the apex trigger we have written okay here we have to know some of the good things in this uh okay I, oh, sorry just click on a bit <laughs> sorry yeah uh, just give a second like this black on this topic okay i don't want to uh, tell everything in a single day so that your mind will get hectic so please go through all those things Tomorrow I will show you the best things, uh, what are the best practices we have to follow while writing the code, all those things I will tell you. From tomorrow, the main topics will start. Okay. Today you got the overview of the what is the developer console, why we are learning this developing, what are the things, what are the names. I will uh, share you these notes in uh, one of the text file, or else if you want to copy it, I will share it these notes in the chat in this particular one. If you want to copy it, you can copy it. Whichever you like it, I will tell me. Um, I think. Um, since I'm using my phone, maybe you can have an, you can send me a sure. link where I can go and if there's a link or an email, I think I will. Sure, sure. I will, I will send it. Yeah. No problem. So, okay. yeah, sure. I have another question. Um, how long, yeah. how, what's the duration of this training? Which days? Mm -hmm. Some 10 to 15 days. Okay. So, uh, 15, 15 days is the max 15 days is a max and from the approach you think 15 days will be enough i'm not saying to be perfect but to be able to understand both the class That's triggers right. mm, i go just think that uh, in the starting four days i will tell you about the basics uh, which are helpful to write to start the class example if class is there uh, if you split the classes, Apex class is a uh, combination of two, three, uh, two, three, four points, two, three or four points. If you combine all those points, then it is a class. I will split those points and I will tell you different, differently. This is first point. This is second point. This is third point. This is fourth point. If you combine all those, that is a Apex class. I will tell you like this. So 
once i will tell you all the four points or three points then i will show you how to combine the class then you will add, then you will get an idea then you will tell then you tell me whether you want some two days of gap to practice these things like this you can take it i don't have any problem if you want to take the gap of two days or three days to practice those things so okay. or else if you want to continue the class i can continue it normally if i want to continue daily uh, every every week five days uh, it will take three weeks to complete the, the uh, what you can say development plan. Like okay. these are the topics we will learn in the further days. Okay. You can see. Swakal queries I will tell you on one day. Collections I will tell you one day. DM locations I one day I will tell you. Apex class. If I combine all these three, then that is called Apex class. Okay. Then I will show you how to write Apex class. Then the triggers. The triggers will take four days of that. Uh, four days, not a single day. Then recursive trigger, it will take some half day. Then future method and apex, uh, cubal, uh, cubal apex, both will take one day. Batch apex, purely one day it will take. Schedule apex, obviously it will, it will combine in this both. These two will combine in a single class, I can cover it. And test class, half day or one day. Half day is enough actual test class, it's not that much big. Uh, frankly saying, even if you don't know the test class also, some I will show you one uh, page. There are so many developers outside of the world who will help you even if you don't know how to write the test classes one community is there okay is a salesforce community developers community salesforce.developer.salesforce.com slash forums okay direct url is not there what i'll do is um write a you can see I will show you the URL yeah you can see this is one of the forum okay okay I'll just share you one of the link normally casual link okay. here what we will do I will share it in the chat you can access this link this link okay it's a random link just i have typed it here how can we use this you can see login with salesforce if you click on it it will ask you your login details your your developer org your personal org your personal login details will ask you uh, just log in from there it will directly log into your salesforce and it will directly come here you can see here right now it is showing login and sign up if you already logged in these two these two buttons will go off and your name will come here in okay. future no one is there for you to help okay no one is there literally no one is there to help you you are stuck in somewhere you don't know how to proceed it just type your question here you can see this person actually is ready this person don't know about this one write a trigger on account object while inserting a text value some name ended with text example this one on account object it should throw an error how will it achieve this if this person don't know it now we will see okay makes sense right so you can see so this person is helping you need to use a user a user add error option you can see this person is saying you have to use this one and he is the amit Chaudhary. he is the mvp in salesforce okay this person is also helping you can see this person is saying use this learn this from this trial head you can learn this from the trial head or else use this below code to show that particular error and follow this best practice you can see okay so, and so uh, this one is very helpful for you uh use this link this one is very helpful you can see the best practices of salesforce triggers best practice copy these things in your uh, personal notes this is very very helpful for you this wow. one okay okay can copy this i am i'm only saying it's very good it's very good it was very good he has written very much i think it is it is already available in the salesforce uh, main page only he copied from there and he pasted here that's it but this is very helpful where you can find these kind of things is help.salesforce i think you already know it yeah from here you can never you can get everything help the salesforce guide only you can get everything here 
this kind of notes what are the notes he has studied right everything can can get it from here and besides this course is there any other course that you are teaching besides after or this just you just do admin and develop development yeah i will teach the whole sales course just just give me a second i will, firstly i will uh, switch off the recording